welcome dear friends to my video lecture on unit 6 that is uh, research in education uh, under education paper so let us straight away enter into the topic thank you for your uh, support and your cooperation i am sure you are enjoying all my videos continue to uh, listen to you know my classes and i am very happy about it kindly subscribe if you like the classes also thank you very much yeah unit 6 research in education uh, meaning and scope of educational research meaning and steps of scientific method characteristic of scientific uh, uh, method uh, character of scientific method replicability precision uh, falsifiability and parsimony Types of uh, scientific methods, uh, exploratory, explanatory and descriptive, aims of research as a scientific activity, problem solving, solving, theory building and prediction, types of research, fundamental applied and action, approaches to educational research, quantity and qualitative, designs in educational research, descriptive, experimental and historical. Then uh, in part B, that is uh, section B, variables, meaning of concepts, constructs and variables, types of variables, independent, dependent, extraneous, intervening and moderate and variables, hypothesis, concept, sources, types, uh, research hypothesis, directional hypothesis, non-directional hypothesis, null hypothesis, then formulating hypothesis, characteristics of a good hypothesis, steps of writing a research proposal, concept of universe and sample, characteristics of a good sample, techniques of sample, sampling, techniques of sampling, probability and non-probability sampling, tools of research, validity, reliability and standardization of a tool, types of tool, rating scale, attitude scale, questionnaire, aptitude test, achievement test, inventory, techniques of research, observation, interview and projected techniques. That is part B. In part C, we are having types of measurement scale, nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio, quantitative data analysis, descriptive data analysis, measures of central tendency, variability, fiduciary limits and graphical presentation of data, uh, testing of hypothesis type 1, type 2 errors, levels of significance, power of a statistical test and effect size, parametric techniques, non-parametric techniques, conditions to be satisfied for using parametric techniques, inferential data analysis, use, of, use and interpretation of statistical techniques, uh, correlation, t-test, z-test, ANOVA, chi-square, uh, that is equal probability and normal probability hypothesis, then qualitative data analysis, their data reduction and classification, uh, analytical interaction and constant comparison, concept of triangulation, etc. That is part to be. In part C, we are having qualitative research designs, grounded theory designs, types, characteristics, design steps in conducting uh, a GT research, strength and weakness of GT, narrative research designs, uh, meaning key character steps in conducting NR design, narrative uh, research designs, case study meaning characteristics components of case study design types of uh, case study design steps of conducting a case study research strength and weaknesses ethnographic meaning characteristics underlying assumptions steps of conducting ethnographic research writing ethnographic accounts strength and weaknesses etc then mixed method designs uh, there we come across characteristics types of mm designs triangular uh, triangulation, explanatory, exploratory designs, steps in conducting MM designs, strength and weaknesses of MM research. Now, let us uh, straight away enter into part one. And there, I, we already spoken about the uh, uh, syllabus content, no? uh, topics. So, of course, you, you, as well, you can see that. Uh, first, we start with the basic things. Yes. <coughs> what is the meaning and scope of educational research? We are talking about part one. Uh, educational research involves a systematic investigation aimed at improving educational practices, understanding learning processes and enhancing educational outcomes. It applies scientific methods to explore, describe and explain educational phenomena. What is the scope of uh, research in education? Curriculum development. I mean, all these things uh, we are using educational research for all these uh, 
things you know curriculum development teaching methods and learning processes educational policies student uh, assessment teacher effectiveness educational technology etc what are the educational implications of this uh, educational research it enhances teaching and learning qu quality it informs of policy making and educational reforms it provides evidence based practices it supports curriculum development and instructional design what is the meaning and steps of scientific method because research is after all it's a scientific method so what is the meaning of this scientific method the scientific method is a systematic process of inquiry involving observation hypothesis formulation experimentation and conclusion to generate reliable knowledge what are the steps involved in scientific research first observation identifying a phenomenon or problem secondly hypothesis formulating a testable prediction third experimentation conducting experiments to test the hypothesis then analysis analyzing data to draw conclusions finally conclusions uh, giving results writing the thesis everything accepting rejecting or modifying the hypothesis that is uh, uh, in the scientific research finally you after analyzing data to conclusions you whether you accept reject or modify the hypothesis etc come in there what are the education implications of scientific method in research it encourages critical thinking and problem solving skills it promote evidence based uh, decision making it enhances research quality and reliability what are the characteristics of scientific method replicability replicability means a repetition results can be reproduced in subsequent studies you know whatever study you do in the same heading under the same conditions results should be more or less the same that is replicability then precision uh, correctness exactness measurements and definitions are accurate and consistent then falsifiability hypothesis can be disproven through evidence then parsimony what is parsimony that is simplicity in explanations avoiding unnecessary language complex uh, you know uh, uh, treatment etc uh, simple simple everyone can understand it's so nice to see you know that is simplicity in explanation that is parsimony then educational implications scientific research ensures reliability and validity in educational research it facilitates the development of clear and concise theories it promotes continuous improvement in educational practices what are the types of scientific method exploratory exploratory method investigates a new and unclear phenomena to gain insights what is explanatory research scientific method explanatory method seeks to explain the relationship between variables i think you are, you are able to understand the difference exploratory method investigates new and unclear things phenomena to gain insights whereas explanatory scientific method uh, it explains the relationship between variables so two different things actually descriptive method descriptive method uh, describes the characteristics of a population or phenomena uh, educational implications it provides a comprehensive understanding of educational issues it helps identify relationship and causes of educational outcomes it supports a detailed documentation and analysis of educational practices what are the aims of research as a scientific activity problem solving addressing specific educational issues and finding solutions theory building developing frameworks to explain educational phenomena prediction forecasting future trends and outcomes in education what are the educational implications of this uh, you know uh, uh, aims of research as a scientific activity that is it solves practical problems in educational settings it enhances the theoretical foundations of education it informs the future educational strategies and interventions what are the types of research fundamental research it explores the theoretical aspects without immediate practical application that we already explained in so many ways applied research it focuses on practical application education theory to solve specific problems action research it is also a cycle of planning acting observing and reflecting to improve practices within a specific context 
what are the education implication of this uh, you know uh, broad classification of research that is uh, fundamental research fundamental research enriches theoretical knowledge fundamental research theoretical knowledge applied research addresses practical issues in education action research fosters continuous improvement in teaching and learning what are the approaches to educational research there are two things already we know about it in the first paper itself we have spoken enough about this quantitative research and qualitative research these are the approaches to educational research also quantitative research it uses a numerical data and statistical analysis to test the hypothesis what is qualitative research it involves a non numerical data to understand phenomena in depth so quality in depth oh, that's very important what are the educational implications of this uh, classification of research quantitative qualitative quantitative research provides a generalizable generalizable gen generalizable very sorry you know the word is that uh, is a universe in other words generalizable generalizable means uh, that can be made universal uh, you know so the quantitative research provides uh, results that can be accepted by uh, so many you know that's the idea here by all uh, generalizable results qualitative research offers a detailed contextual insights both approaches complement each other for holistic understanding of educational issues that is a mixed method actually then designs in educational research what are the various designs in educational research the descriptive it describes the characteristics of functions of a phenomenon then the experimental it, it examines the cause and effect relationship through controlled experiments then historical it studies past events to understand their impact on current educational practices what are the educational implications of these various designs descriptive designs help document and understand current educational practices uh, experimental designs provide evidence on the effectiveness of educational interventions in other words educational initiatives then historical designs historical designs offer insights into the evolution and development of educational theories and practices so uh, now uh, so let us ask some questions what is the primary aim of educational research a to entertain b to develop new educational theories c to solve educational problems to promote literature see we very simple it is what is the primary aim of educational research to solve educational problems that is the main aim the main goal of educational research is to identify address and solve problems within the educational field thereby improving educational practices and outcomes which of the following best describes educational research which of the following best describes educational research four alternatives have been given a unstructured and casual inquiries b systematic and structured investigations c random observations d opinion based analysis so what is the uh, which is the best one here that is systematic and structured investigation that is educational research educational research involves a systematic and methodical approach to study and understand various aspects of education then uh, you know what is the first step in the scientific method there are uh, four alternatives given of course you know formulating a hypothesis reviewing literature identifying a problem conducting an experiment which is the correct one which is the first step identifying a problem first we need to have a problem then only we can study about it so the scientific method begins with identifying and defining a problem or question that needs to be addressed which step involves making an educated guess in the scientific method which step involves making an educated guess in the scientific method educated guess or tentative guess that is nothing but hypothesis isn't it formulating a hypothesis that is called a tentative guess or uh, educated guess you know from the hypothesis we start the you know i in fact we begin to do the main part of the research so formulating a hypothesis is the correct answer formulating a hypothesis involves making an educated guess or prediction that can be tested through research uh, now which characteristics of the scientific method refers to the ability to reproduce results precision replicability parsimony falsifiability replicability already we have seen that replicability refers to the ability of other researchers to duplicate the study and obtain similar results what does a falsifiability in scientific research imply 
uh, you know four alternatives a results can be duplicated uh, statements can be proven wrong results are precise theories are simple so what does falsifiability in scientific research imply statements can be proven wrong that is falsifiability so falsifiability means that a hypothesis or theory can be tested and potentially disproven by evidence uh, which type of research method is used to explore new phenomena or ideas explanatory exploratory uh, descriptive analytical which type of research method is used to explore new phenomena that is exploratory exploratory research is conducted to explore a new area where little information is available i mean you we don't know much about that at that time we indulge in exploratory research in order to find out what it is which method aims to describe characteristics of a population or phenomena explanatory exploratory descriptive analytical that is descriptive you know uh, the, the, the descriptive method describes characters is no doubt about it descriptive research aims to describe the characteristics of behavior of a given population or phenomena yeah uh, what is the primary aim of problem solving research uh, problem solving is to address and solve specific issues you know uh, the name itself we are having the uh, solution also to address and solve specific issues problem solving research is focused on finding solutions to specific problems which aim of research focuses on developing explanation for phenomena which aim of research focuses on developing explanation means a theoretical part is it now developing explanation so theory so prediction problem solving theory building descriptive that is theory theory building theory building research aims to develop and refine theories that explain how and why certain phenomena occur now what is the main goal of fundamental research four alternatives have given what is the main goal of fundamental already we have done it now so to develop knowledge without immediate application that is the very correct answer to develop knowledge without immediate application then fundamental research is aimed at generating knowledge for the sake of understanding without a direct application in mind which type of research is conducted to solve practical problems fundamental theoretical applied conceptual applied you know uh, practical problems applied research education is an applied subject education uh, you know has applied research so applied research is focused on solving practical real world problems which approaches to educational research involves a numerical data numerical data certainly quantitative no doubt about it statistical uh, calculation are also there so that be quantitative so numerical data research involving uh, numerical data uh, is nothing but quantitative research quantitative research involves the collection and analysis of numerical data to understand uh, patterns and relationships what is the key characteristic of qualitative research key characteristics of qualitative research is a very important one uses numerical data focuses on meaning and experience employs large sample sizes utilizes statistical analysis it focuses on meaning and experience that's very important yeah, the key characteristics of qualitative research is nothing but the focus on meaning and experiences the qualitative research seeks to understand individuals experiences perspectives and social context now which design is most suitable for determining cost cause and effect relationship descriptive correlational experimental historical experimental you know that's a cause and effect no yeah, of course you know about it no experimental means what you know we always uh, you know uh, in order to uh, compare two groups no uh, or uh, to find the effectiveness of mass media we have two groups like that no Uh, one group is given another group is not given like that so normally experimental uh, uh, you know research only determines cause and effect relationship like that so experimental research design is used to determine cause or relationship by manipulating variables and controlling conditions what is the primary purpose of historical research historical research means past no doubt about to investigate the past events you know that is the correct one uh, historical research examines past even to understand their causes and effects what is the parsimony principle in research emphasize 
parsimony very simple no simplicity simplicity in its approach in the research parsimony refers to the preference for the simplest explanation that can account for all observation simplest explanation very easy to understand no bombastic language or anything in which type of research are variables not manipulated by the researcher a descriptive research descriptive research normally will not uh, normally will not have uh, you know what you call this uh, uh, control variables uh, variables you know uh, not manipulation of variables of course variables will be there but no manipulation of variables in descriptive research so descriptive research involves observing and describing phenomena without manipulating variables which type of research is characterized by iterative cycles of planning acting observing and reflecting of course that is the definition of action research action research only has this cycle of planning acting observing and reflecting so action research involves this cycle to address practical issues and improve practices through continuous reflection and action what is the common method used in qualitative research surveys experiments interviews statistical analysis that is interviews qualitative research often uses methods such as interviews to gather in depth information about participants experiences and perspectives so what is a replicability ensure in research already we have said that why replicability why do we do it again and again is it is for consistency whether it is consistent the research is consistent so consistency replicability ensures that a research findings can be consistently reproduced by other researchers following the same methodology right so that is only for that replicability uh, that is the purpose of replicability which research design involves studying the same subject over a long period you know same th subjects over a long period that we already studied cross sectional longitudinal experimental descriptive that is longitudinal you know for example the characteristics of uh, adolescence you know so it's a long time you know, many experts you know do the research for so many years in order to find the characteristics of uh, uh, adolescence that way longitudinal uh, research longitudinal research design involves a repeated observations of the same subject over an extended period that's why longitudinal research is called a temporal research temporal sequence it uh, it is concerned about the temporal sequence time time over a long period it is found out uh, i mean the research uh, gives the findings over the long period what is the distinguishing feature of explanatory research explanatory research it is explain isn't it he explains why phenomena occur that is uh, explanatory research he explains why phenomena why phenomena occur so that is the idea here uh, explanatory research seeks to explain the causes and the reasons behind certain phenomena which type of research is primarily concerned with theory development fundamental applied action research we know fundamental basic research only talks about uh, theory production is it theory development fundamental research aims to develop theoretical knowledge and understanding without immediate practical application immediate practical application that is action research which approach to research focuses on statistical significance and generalizability qualitative quantitative descriptive historical so statistical significance generalizability certainly a quantitative research quantitative research emphasizes statistical analysis and aims to generalize findings to larger populations then variables and now we are going for part to b part a is over part to b variables meanings of concepts constructs and variable types of variables independent dependent and extraneous extraneous intervening and moderated variables hypothesis concept sources types research uh, you know research hypothesis directional non directional null hypothesis formulating hypothesis characteristics of a good hypothesis steps of writing a hypothesis proposal uh, uh, steps of writing a research proposal concept of universal sample characteristics characteristics of a good sample techniques of sampling probability and non probability sampling tools of research validity reliability and standardization of a tool types of tools rating scale attitude scale question and aptitude test and achievement test inventory then techniques of research observation interview and projective techniques all these things are there in part to b of the latest syllabus right what uh, variables you know uh, meaning of concepts constructs and variables let us see what are concepts 
concepts or abstract ideas representing classes of phenomena abstract ideas concepts what are constructs construct or constructs uh, constructs specific types of concepts often used in social sciences that are deliberately created or adapted for scientific purpose so that is construct and you know, a construction of the mind you know construct or constructs okay then variables elements that can take on different values they are measurable traits or characteristics that researchers study so variables are varying and they, they are measurable traits or characteristics that is uh, variable in research what are the types of variables independent variable variables manipulated by the researcher to observe the effect the variables manipulated by the researcher to observe their effect independent variables dependent variable variables affected by changes in the iv uh, the outcomes measured in the study so that is independent dependent variable extraneous variable variables not of interest but could influence the uh, dependent variable that is the idea you know for an example dependent variable you know you can give an example like this two groups of students you know 30 30 students and mass media whether mass media is effective or not so for one group you are giving mass media another group you are giving traditional teaching and then it's so the, they, they are uh, dependent variable independent variable so that way there is a uh, the, the, this a mediator is there of course the, through mass media you are giving it at that time it is possible that the students who are not having mass media uh, may have something new because of their maturity so the maturity the researcher is not worried about but then uh, uh, over the months maybe six months if you are making a, doing the research and out of six months uh, some growth will be there in the uh, students so that way the variable will be slightly different you know uh, extraneous variable means uh, it, it is not uh, concerned by the uh, researcher but the maturity of the student could influence the uh, dependent variable that is uh, extraneous extraneous variable then intervening variables variables that mediate the relationship between uh, independent variable and uh, uh, dependent variable intervening variables variables that mediate the relationship the moderator variables variables that affect the strength or direction of the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable that is moderator variable variables that affect the strength or direction of the relationship hypothesis let us uh, discuss on hypothesis uh, concept what is the concept of hypothesis it is a testable statement about the relationship between two or more variables uh, mark the words hypothesis a testable statement about the relationship between two or more variables what are the sources of hypothesis it is derived from theories observations uh, previous researches and practical issues what are the types research hypothesis statement predicting a relationship between variables directional hypothesis specifies the direction of the expected relationship non-directional hypothesis it predicts a relationship without specifying the direction null hypothesis statement that there is no relationship between variables of course you must be knowing all these things again and again you study it with examples but i know they just to remind you of the basic facts i am giving all this formulating hypothesis it involves identifying variables ensuring testability and predicting relationship so formulating hypothesis means what it involves identifying variables ensuring testability and predicting relationship that is formulation of hypothesis what are the characteristics of a good hypothesis clear specific testable and based on existing knowledge and theory uh, so very good uh, you know uh, uh, characters you know characters of a good uh, hypothesis means it should be clear it should be specific it should be testable it should be based on existing knowledge and theory then what are the steps of writing a research proposal title clearly indicates the study's focus then abstract summary of the research problem objectives methods and potential implications third introduction context problem statement and significance then literature review summary it, it summarizes the relevant research and identifies the gaps in knowledge 
you know, normally the second uh, chapter in education, uh, educational research. First chapter, the introduction, context, problem, statement, significance. Then research question and hypothesis. It specifies what the study aims to answer or not. Research question or hypothesis. It specifies what the study aims to answer or test. Methodology. It, uh, details, uh, it details uh, research design, participants, instruments, procedures and data analysis plans. Everything uh, given in the methodology. The entire thing, you know, or whatever you need in research, you know, everything is there in the methodology. Then ethical considerations, it addresses potential ethical issues and how they will be managed, ethical considerations. Then timeline, it provides a schedule for the research activities. Then budget, estimates the cost associated with the research. All these things are found in research proposal. You know, even before doing the research, you have to submit the research proposal. In the research proposal, you have to show all these things, all these nine things. Right. Uh, so again, what is that? Maybe it's an important question. Title, abstract, introduction, literature review, research question hypothesis, methodology, ethical considerations, timeline, budget. Now, what is the concept of universe and sample? Universe means what? The entire group of individuals or instances that a researcher is interested in. Sample is a subset of the population selected for the actual study. So it's a subset of the population selected for the actual study. Characteristics of a good sample, representative, adequate size, uh, unbiased and randomly selected if possible. What are the techniques of sampling? Probability sampling, non-probability sampling. Probability sampling means what? Each member of the population has a known chance of being selected. That is probability sampling. It is a mathematical in this approach. No doubt about. Then types. Simple random sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling. All come under uh, probability sampling. Uh, you know, in a mathematical way you do this, yes. Non-probability sampling. Not all members have a known chance of being selected. Certain amount of freedom for the researcher here. Convenient sampling, judgmental sampling, quota sampling, snowball sampling. Certain amount of freedom given to the researcher to, you know, choose, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, his own samples according to the desired, uh, uh, according to the research purpose. Uh, what are the tools of research? Validity. The extent to which an instrument measures what it is intended to measure. Right, that is the idea. The extent to which an instrument measures what it is intended to measure, validity, reliability, the consistency of an instrument in measuring a concept, the consistency of an instrument in measuring a concept that is reliability. What is standardization? It ensures uniform procedures in administering and scoring an instrument. It ensures uniform proce procedures in administering and scoring an instrument. That is standardization. What are the types, types of tools? Rating scale. It measures the degree to which a variable is present. It measures the degree degree to which a variable is present. That is a rating scale. Then attitude scale. It assesses individual attitudes and opinions. Questionnaire. A set of written questions used to, to gather information. It is used in survey researches. Uh, even in education it is used. Aptitude test. It assesses potential to learn or perform. Aptitude test. Achievement test. It measures knowledge or proficiency in a subject. Inventory. A checklist or list of items to assess various characters. Normally yes or no. Inventory. Uh, what are the tools of research? Validity. Validity refers to the extent to which a research tool measures what it is intended to measure. What are the types of validity? Content validity. It ensures the tool covers the entire range of the concept. So content validity. The content is really, you know, uh, it, it covers, you know, the entire thing is covered with regard to the topic concept. Then construct validity. Construct validity or construct validity assesses whether the tool truly measures the theoretical construct. Then criterion validity, it compares the tool with other measures or outcomes. What are the educational implications implications of these uh, different types of uh, validity? That is ensuring validity is critical in education to accurately assess students' knowledge, skills, attitudes and abilities leading to fair and meaningful evaluations. The reliability. What is reliability? Reliability refers to the consistency and stability of the results obtained from a research tool over time. Types of reliability. Test-retest reliability. Stability of test scores over time. 
even if it is done twice or thrice the results should be more or less the same uh, inter rater reliability consistency of scores across different raters inter rater reliability consistency of scores across different raters then internal consistency consistency of items within the test the questions no it should be uh, consistent within the test no internal consistency consistency of items within the test you know when you are talking about uh, uh, academic so you should not be talking about the aesthetic sense there in the question no Uh, so that way consistency of items within the test educational implications reliable tools ensure consistent and dependable results which is essential for tracking student progress and making informed decisions then standardization of standardization standardization of a tool that is standardization involves establishing norms and uniform procedures for administering and scoring a tool so norms and uniform procedure very important one then process it includes pilot testing norming and ensuring consistent application across different settings what are the education implications of these things standardized tools provide a benchmark for comparing individual performance against a defined norm aiding in identifying areas needing improvement that is standardized tools against a defined norm then uh, types of tools rating scale no, so just now we have seen that but we see it in a different angle also a tool that allows the respondents to rate an item on a pre defined scale it assesses attitudes opinions and behaviors education implications useful for evaluating teacher performance student attitudes and classroom environment then attitude score, uh, scale attitude scale uh, it measures the individual's attitudes towards a particular object or concept likelihood scale thousand score uh, they are all attitude scales for your information so uh, what are the educational implications it helps in understanding students and teachers attitudes towards subjects teaching methods and policies Uh, some of the uh, so question of course question and question are another tool of research a set of written questions used to, to collect data from respondents what are the types of open ended question and closed ended question so uh, what are the educational implications efficient for gathering large amounts of data on students background experiences and opinions opinions aptitude test what is the meaning of aptitude test it measures the individual's potential to succeed in a certain activity actually this national eligibility test is nothing but aptitude test in order to become a lecturer what you are going to write now that is it measures the individual's potential inner power to succeed in a certain activity what are the types of cognitive psychomotor yes what are the education implication it helps in identifying student strength and potential career paths whether uh, someone is ready for the future job in you know in a particular uh, area no that's an understanding whether he, he gives the promise of becoming a very good person in that area then achievement test it measures the knowledge or proficiency a person has acquired uh, standardized test teacher mat test there are two things standardized test and teacher mat test teacher mat test very subjective standardized test very objective no doubt about it then yes, it is essential for assessing student learning progress and the effectiveness of instructional methods then inventory uh, what is the meaning of inventory it's a type of questionnaire that measures the characteristics or behaviors Uh, what are the uses personal uh, personality inter inventories uh, interest inventories and all uh, are there right? personality inter uh, inventories interest inventories are there okay uh, in order to measure you know, the personality of the people what are the educational implications it assists in understanding students personality traits interest and learning styles what are the techniques of research observation is a system what is observation is a systematic recording of observable behaviors or events what are the types participant observation non participant observation what are the educational implications it provides insights into classroom dynamics student interactions and instructional effectiveness interview what is what is the meaning of interview it is a method of collecting data through direct questioning uh, it is structured semi structured unstructured what are the educational implications it allows for in depth understanding of students experiences attitudes and needs providing qualitative insights that complement quantitative data very important one in depth understanding of students experience for that we conduct interview projective techniques uh, indirect methods used to, to uncover un underlying thoughts feeling that is secret thoughts feelings and motivation indirect methods 
So project is an indirect method, not directly given uh, through some indirect method. Uh, you know, the student uh, I mean, reveals his personality, in other words, hidden personality. What are the types of road charging in plot test? Thematic of perception a perception test. What are the education implications? It is useful for exploring students' subconscious attitudes and emo emotions which can inform counseling and psychological support services. Now let us uh, discuss some of the questions. Which of the following best defines a variable in research? Which of the following best defines a variable in research? A fixed characteristic that does not change, a measurable characteristic that can vary, an assumption made for the purpose of research, a theoretical concept that cannot be measured. Of course, vari variable means it should be varying. So the second one, a measurable characteristic that can vary. A variable is a characteristic or attribute that can vary or take on different values among subjects in a study. What is an independent variable? The variable that is manipulated by the researcher, the outcome or response variable, a variable that may interfere with the results, a variable that mediates the relationship between other variables. So of course that we know the definition, independent variable nothing but a variable that is manipulated by the researcher. Right. Uh, which of the following is an example of a dependent variable? So three things are given. You have to choose which is the uh, most appropriate example for dependent variable. Type of treatment given to patients. Patients are recovery time after treatment. Number of participants in a study. Age of participants. Now I have marked B. Why the dependent variable is the outcome that is measured to see the effect of the independent variable. In this case, the patient's recovery time. So the dependent variable is the outcome that is measured to see the effect of the independent variable. So in this case, the patient's recovery time. So that is very important. What is an extraneous variable? Extraneous. A variable that is controlled by the researcher. A variable that influences the outcome but is not of uh, interest in the study or is not controlled by the researcher. And uh, that is the right one. You know, the main variable behind all these things are there. But what is the correct answer? Extraneous variables are not of primary interest. They are not given by the, they are not, con uh, they are not thought about by the researcher. But automatically it happens due to various factors. It can influence the outcome and therefore need to be controlled. That's very important. Intervening variables are also known as moderator variables, mediator variables, dependent variables, independent variables. Of course, intervening variables are also called mediator. I think, uh, yeah. B, no? Mediator variables. What is mediator variable? Intervening variables are mediator variables. They explain the process through which the independent variable affects the dependent variable. Okay. Now, which hypothesis states that there is no effect or relationship between variables? A research hypothesis, directional hypothesis, non-directional hypothesis, null hypothesis. There is no effect or no, uh, like that. No? No human being, uh, I mean, uh, no boy or girl is intelligent. Like that, if you are saying, you are you are not affirming anyone, no, that way. That is null hypothesis. A null hypothesis states that there is no significant effect or relationship between the variables under study. A hypothesis that predicts the nature and direction of the relationship between variables is called what? Directional hypothesis. Nature and direction of the relationship. The boys are more intelligent than girls. There is a direction, no? or girls are more, uh, uh, you know, the girls are wiser than boys. You know, the direct, uh, there is a direction no? in the relationship. The yeah, direction of hypothesis specifies the, the, specifies the expected direction of the relationship between variables. The first step in formulating hypothesis is what? Reviewing the literature, collecting data, defining the problem, testing the hypothesis. What is that? Defining the problem. The first step in formulating a hypothesis is defining the problem. The initial step in formulating a hypothesis involves defining the research problem clearly. Then only we ca you can go for hypothesis. Which of the following is not a characteristic of a good hypothesis? It should be testable, it should be based on existing knowledge, it should be complex and broad, it should state the expected relation between variable. You know, uh, A, B, D are actually characteristic of a good hypothesis. Whereas it should be complex and broad, it is not at all true. It should not be complex, it should not be broad, it should be, you know, uh, uh, very brief, it should be very clear, 
no it should be pointed no that is that way it should not be complex and broad so the t the c option c will not come here it is not a characteristic of a good hypothesis a good hypothesis should be simple and specific not complex and broad what is the primary purpose of a research proposal a to review existing literature b to define the research methodology c to obtain funding or approval for research uh, to present research findings to c normally in uh, you know uh, in industrial thing and uh, even even in educational settings the a research proposal is typically used to, to obtain funding or approval to proceed with a research project okay the universe in a research study refers to what the universe in a research study the universe in a research study refers to the population actually the tools and techniques used for data collection theoretical framework of the study the entire group of individuals or the items from which samples may be drawn the entire say suppose you want to study beer trainees you will be going to some 20 colleges but then uh, you, you will be applying the results to all the beer students that is the idea here so the all the students universe okay so some colleges uh, students from some colleges they are samples that way you have to take so universe means the entire group of individuals or items from which samples may be drawn the universe or population includes all members or items from which a sample can be drawn for the study a good sample should be large and random representative and random small and biased convenient and selective which is the right one it should be representative of the entire population it should be random also you should be chosen in a random way not in a biased way in a in a because of our likes and dislikes so that is a random so representative and random a good sample should accurately represent the population and it should be selected randomly to avoid bias prejudice which of the following is a probability sampling technique convenient sampling quota sampling stratified random sampling purposes sampling here what is the probability sampling technique among the four convenient sampling quota sampling purpose sampling they come under non probability sampling not uh, rigidly done through mathematics that is the idea here where a stratified random sampling is rigidly done uh, through math uh, through mathematical way the probability sampling technique so stratified random sampling is a probability sampling technique where the population is divided into strata different uh, you know uh, groups and random samples are taken from each group stratum so that way uh, c is the right one stratified random sampling is a probability sampling technique the non probability sampling techniques include simple random simple uh, sampling systematic sampling cluster sampling snowball sampling non probability see first three will be probability sampling now, systematically with uh, mathematical calculation it is done whereas uh, snowball sampling is not like that snowball sampling is a non probability uh, a sampling technique where existing study projects uh, very sorry you know i am going very fast i think snowball sampling is a non probability sampling technique where existing study subjects recruit future subjects among their acquaintances see you are taking some people on the on your one the researcher due to the difficulty level of the research he has to choose certain uh, samples okay but uh, maybe some experts in a particular area those experts will recommend some more uh, experts you know that is called a snowball sampling no so it is not uh, it, it doesn't come under probability sampling theory non probability sampling then the degree to which a tool measures what it claims to measure is known as what that is uh, validity the degree to which a tool measures what it claims to measure is known as uh, b validity validity refers to the extent to which a tool accurately measures what it is intended to <coughs> measure measure reliability of a research tool refers to what reliability of research tool the accuracy the accuracy of measurement the consistency of measurement the usability of the tool the validity of the tool that is b the consistency research reliability always goes with goes with the consistency so reliability of a research tool refers to the consistency of measurements reliability refers to the consistency and stability of the measurements obtained using the research tool which type of research tool is designed to measure attitudes rating scale attitude scale aptitude scale of course attitude scale that we know from the world itself an attitude scale is specifically designed to measure individuals attitude towards a particular characteristics uh, particular characteristic or 
can what are the characters of good sample no what is a representative i mean with regard to characters of good sample what is a representative sample a sample that includes only volunteers a sample that reflects the characters of a population a sample that is chosen randomly a sample that excludes outliers so what is the correct what is a representative sample a sample that reflects the characteristics of the population even though you are taking only 2000 uh, or 1200 and 200 beer students your results should uh, reflect you know uh, the reality of uh, the entire uh, you know beer family beer students family that is the idea a sample that reflects the characteristics of the population that's the correct answer now what is, why is random sampling preferred in research random sampling it is very objective actually so you know uh, yeah it guarantees a biased sample it ensures every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected it is easier to conduct it requires a fewer resources what should be the correct one random sampling preferred in research because it ensures every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected no likes and dislikes no prejudice no uh, not choosing according to your likes you know everything is being everything is having a chance to be selected no that is unbiased that is objective define sampling bias uh, what is sampling bias Uh, it is systematic error due to an unrepresentative sample random variation in sample results the process of selecting a sample the reliability of a sample which is the right one sampling bias that is systematic error due to an unrepresentative sample you know if samples are not uh, properly taken it may not uh, you know give the universal uh, results you no know? the results may not be representing the universal the generalizability of the that is what that is the problem generalizability means uh, universal truth you know it it should lead to the universal acceptance isn't it see you are uh, having a research for 1000 uh, student beer student but then you should reflect the results for the entire beer community i mean all over india that's the idea here so the system sampling by the systematic error due to an unrepresentative sample without taking b s student if you are taking a hard student science student or engineering students uh, it is sampling bias you know uh, it will not uh, represent the uh, um, entire population that is b s students that is the idea is sampling bias so sampling bias occurs when a when certain members of a population are systematically more likely to be included in the sample than others leading to a skewed representation what is the significance of a sample size in research large samples ensure higher validity smaller samples are easier to manage sample size doesn't affect research outcome sample size determines the reliability very important one we have to learn by heart actually these things you have to fix in mind large sample sizes generally increase the reliability and validity of research finding by reducing the margin of error and increasing representativeness that's very important large samples are always uh, preferred you know in research that we have to uh, put in our mind how can researchers minimize sampling errors by increasing the sample size by using convenient sampling by excluding certain population groups by conducting a pilot study that is increasing the sample size that is very important how can researchers minimize sampling errors by uh, you know uh, increasing the sample size so increasing the sample size helps in minimizing sampling errors by providing a more accurate representation of the population which of the following is an example of non probability sampling example of non probability sampling simple random sampling stratified sampling convenient sampling cluster sampling convenient sampling is the uh, you know example of non probability sampling because uh, it is uh, done by the researcher himself you know that is there according to the convenience his own uh, uh, you know uh, objectives of research he does it you know the samples are taken by him so the convenient sampling convenient sampling involves selecting participants based on ease of access or availability rather than random selection what is a stratified sampling uh, dividing the population into subgroups and then randomly selecting from each subgroup a certain number you no know? that is stratified sampling isn't it so that is the uh, definition of stratified sampling in what dividing the population into homogeneous subgroups or homogeneous subgroups strata 
time I mean boys, girls, you know, uh, married, unmarried, like that, you know. Uh, homogeneous subgroups and then randomly selecting samples from each subgroups. Homogeneous subgroups means what I mean, a beer store, among the beer store, there are so many groups, isn't it? So that, I mean, those who are in the urban area, those who are in the rural area, like that. So, stratified sampling involves dividing the population into homogeneous subgroups, strata, and then randomly selecting samples from each subgroup. Uh, why might uh, quota sampling be used instead of random sampling? Quota sampling ensures a representative sample. Quota sampling is less time consuming. Quota sampling is more cost effective. Random sampling is not feasible. You know, when the uh, quota sampling is used, when random sampling is not feasible or practical. Actually, random sampling should be done, yes. But in many cases, and in the nature of the research will be so different that you cannot have a random sample. At that time, quota sampling is preferred. That is the idea here. Due to time or budget constraints. Describe snowball sampling. What is snowball sampling? It's a type of non probability sampling where existing study subjects recruit future subjects. I already explained to you. I hope you understand that. Snowball sampling relies on reference from initial subjects. That is a recommendation from uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, to, to the samples initially taken. No? Some people have been already taken. No? Those people will recommend other experts like that. So the snowball sampling relies on reference from initial subjects to generate additional subjects, often used in studies where certain populations are hard to reach. Because uh, it is very difficult to reach such samples. For that reason, snowball sampling is uh, done. Okay. That is also acceptable in research. Yes. What is the main drawback of convenient sampling? It is expensive, it is time consuming, it may not be representative of the population, it requires a specialized time. What is the main drawback of convenient sampling? Convenient sampling may lead to biased results because you know the research itself takes certain people as samples for his purposes, isn't it? So the convenient sampling may lead to biased results since participants are chosen based on ease of access, easy to get, you know, ease of access rather than random. Selection, objective selection. Well, now define reliability in research. The extent to which a tool measures what it is intended to uh, measure. Uh, the consistency or stability of a measuring instrument. That is consistency. Always consistency should be kept in mind. Reliability refers to the consistency or stability of a measuring instrument or tool over repeated measurements. How can test or retest reliability be assessed? By comparing results from two different tests, very simple it is. No? Test to retest reliability is assessed by administering the same test to the same group of subjects uh, at different uh, times and comparing the results. So, B, by comparing results from the same test administered twice, not the first one, the second one. By comparing results from the same test administered twice. Uh, what is uh, construct? Construct validity. Construct validity. Let us keep it like that. Uh, the extent to which a tool measures the concept it is intended to measure. The construct validity is it true? Yes, it's true. Construct validity refers to the extent to which a measuring instrument measures the theoretical construct or concept it is intended to measure. Why is the content validity important in tool development? Content validity. Uh, it ensures the tool is unbiased, it assesses the stability of the tool over time, it establishes the relationship between variables, it ensures the tool measures all aspects of the concept being studied. That's the most important aspect. It ensures, that is, content validity ensures that the tool adequately measures all facets of the concept or constructed, uh, or concept or construct. Concept or construct, it is supposed to measure. So the content validity ensures that the two adequately measures all facets of the concept or construct, it is supposed to measure. Describe the criterion related validity. What is the meaning of this criterion validity? A criterion related validity assesses the extent to which a tool predicts or correlates with the criterion or external measure, such as a future event or behavior. Very important one. Criterion related validity assesses the extent to which a tool predicts or correlates, that is, links, no? correlates with the criterion, some principle or external measure. You know, so, so such as a future event or behavior. Now, what is the purpose of an attitude scale? Uh, 
you know, what is the attitude? Are you to measure the attitude? No? Attitude scales are used to measure attitudes, opinions, and perceptions of individual towards a specific object, issue, or situation. How is an achievement test different from an attitude test? You know, achievement test, attitude. How they are different? You know, let us see. Achievement test assesses the knowledge or skills that a person has already acquired. Achievement test, knowledge or skills that a person has already acquired. While aptitude test measures a person's potential or ability to learn or perform tasks. What is the purpose of an inventory in psychological research? What is the purpose of an inventory in psychological research? Inventories in psychological research are used to measure and quantify specific personality traits, attitudes or characteristics of individuals. Describe the Likert scale. What is the Likert scale? What is the meaning of it? The Likert scale is a type of rating scale used in surveys and questionnaires to measure attitudes or opinions. Respondents indicate their level of agreement or disagreement with a series of statements. That is Likert scale. Uh, what are close standard uh, questions commonly used to find? Close standard questions. Close standard questions are structured to elicit specific responses and are used to gather the certain information which is needed. Uh, now we are going for C. Just a minute. So, part to C, now part to C, uh, types of measurement scale, you know, uh, the, the, what are the, what is the, uh, what are the subheadings here, types of measurement scale, nominal, ordinal, interval ratio, quantitative data analysis, descriptive data analysis, measures of central tendency, variability, fiduciary limits, graphical presentation of data, testing of hypothesis, type 1, type 2 errors, levels of significance, power of a statistical test and effect size, parametric techniques, non-parametric techniques, conditions to be satisfied for using parametric techniques, inferential data analysis, use and interpretation of statistical techniques, correlation, t-test, z-test, ANOVA, chi-square, equal probability and normal probability hypothesis, qualitative data analysis, data reduction and classification, anal analytical induction and constant comparison, concept of triangulation, types of measurement scale, nominal, ordinal, interval, interval and ratio. So all these basic ideas only I am giving here. Nominal scale. It categorizes data into mutually exclusive groups, mutually exclusive groups, gender, eye, eye color, etc. So it categorizes data, categories uh, of data. Uh, useful for qualitative data analysis and categorical comparisons. For that reason, we are having nominal scale. Then ordinal scale orders, it orders data, ordinal scale orders data, but the intervals between values are not equal. For an example, first, second, third rank, but then uh, uh, intervals uh, may not be equal. Implications, it allows a ranking but doesn't imply precise differences between ranks. That is uh, ordinal scale. What is the interval scale? It orders, interval scale orders data with the equal intervals between points but lacks a true zero point. For an example, temperature, no? in Celsius and Fahrenheit, that is what we do. Uh, it lacks a true zero point. Uh, but then, uh, you know, it orders the data with equal intervals, no doubt about it. Equal intervals between points. What is the implication? It enables meaningful, uh, meaningful comparisons of differences, but not ratios. So, educational implication of this, uh, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, ordinal scale, uh, interval scale. What is the educational implication? It enables meaningful comparisons of differences but not ratios. Then, ratio scale. It uh, ratio scale orders data with the equal intervals at a true zero point. That's very important. So, calculation is possible. Mathematical calculation is possible with a ratio scale. It orders data with equal intervals under true zero point, height, weight, income, etc. 
uh, it supports meaningful ratios and absolute comparisons. Comparisons are possible, yeah, mathematical calculations are possible. <coughs> Quantitative data analysis. There is a descriptive data analysis. Huh? One of, one of, one of the uh, quantitative data analysis types is a descriptive data analysis. Here we come across measures of central tendency, mean, median, mode, variability, range, variance, standard deviation, uh, fiduciary limits, confidence uh, intervals around estimates, uh, graphical presentation like uh, histograms, box plots, uh, scattered plots, etc. What is the implication of this? It helps to summarize and interpret data effectively. You know, th that is the purpose of this uh, descriptive data analysis. Testing of hypothesis. Type 1 error. Incorrectly rejecting a true null hypothesis. Come on, type 1 error. What is the type 1 error? It is, it is nothing but indirectly rejecting a true null hypothesis. In another word, false positive. It is called false positive. Positive means true null hypothesis, positive, but it rejects false. Incorrectly rejecting a true null hypothesis, type 1 error. What is type 2 error? Failing to reject a false null hypothesis, false negative. It is negative, but then uh, uh, it is not rejecting that false null hypothesis. Failing to reject a false null hypothesis, false negative. So that is a type 2 error. So, incorrectly rejecting a true null hypothesis is called type 1 error. Failing to reject a false null hypothesis is called type 2 error. So, you know, so please understand once and for all keep this in mind. Then levels of significance, alpha, significance level, it determines the probability of committing a type 1 error. Uh, you know, likewise a beta, no, type 2 error. It beta determines the probability of committing a type 2 error. Power of a statistical test. Probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. Uh, 1 minus beta. You know, uh, what is the power of a statistical test? Probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. 1 minus beta. Then uh, effect size. Magnitude of the difference between groups being studied. Magnitude of the difference between groups being studied. That is the power here. So, uh, power of a statistical test. Critical for decision making in research and understanding statistical outcomes. Power of a statistical test. Then parametric techniques versus non-parametric techniques. Parametric techniques, uh, you know, they assume specific population parameters. Example, normal distribution, known variance, etc. Parametric uh, techniques. Non-parametric techniques, they do not assume specific population parameters and are distribution free, uh, free, distribution free. What are the conditions for parametric techniques? Data should be normally distributed and it should have equal variance, homo-sadistic, homo that is equal variance and interval or uh, ratio scaled, interval or ratio should be scaled. Then implication, choice depends on data characteristics and assumptions. Choice depends on data characteristics or assumptions. So that is a, you know, non-parametric techniques. They do not assume specific population parameters and distribution free. Then inferential data analysis. They, uh, it uses sample data to make inferences or generalization about a population. So inference means automatically it is related to the sample data. Okay, so, uh, then statistical techniques for this correlation, t test, z test, ANOVA, chi square. The, what is the use and interpretation of such uh, statistical techniques? It determines the relationships, differences, or association between variables. What is the implication? Education implication. It supports it supports hypothesis testing and generalizability of findings. Statistical techniques are useful for that. It supports hypothesis testing and generalizability of findings. Then qualitative data analysis, in that uh, we have uh, some types, data reduction and classification. It, uh, data reduction and classification condenses extensive raw data into manageable parts. For an example, in uh, qualitative researchers, uh, the researcher goes to a particular place, you know, where those people live in, the, in a particular cultural context. He will be having quite a lot of uh, raw data. That raw data has to be put into manageable parts. That he has to do. That, that's why the coding and other things come there. 
So he condenses the extensive raw data into manageable parts. What is the implication? It simplifies complex data for deeper analysis. Then the second type here in this uh, uh, qualitative data analysis is analytical detection and constant comparison. Systematic comparison of data to identify patterns and themes. What is the implication? It facilitates a theory development and refinement. The concept of triangulation, it combines the multiple methods or data sources to enhance validity and reliability. Our different methods are put together, that is triangulation. You know, in order to have more effective research, we, we intelligent in triangulation research. It strengthens the research findings by corroborating evidence from different angles. So that is the purpose of this uh, triangulated, triangulation, research out of triangulation. Understanding these topics is crucial for researchers and educators, of course, right? Uh, then, measurement of scales. Some questions we are going to ask. What is the nominal scale of measurement? What is the nominal scale of measurement? That is, nominal scales classify data into distinct categories without any inherent order or ranking. You know, as we said, no gender, uh, either, uh, one's uh, financial status, uh, the you know, all these things come under the nominal scales. Uh, men or women, like that, no? Uh, boys or girls. Nominal scales classify data in distinct categories without any inherent order or ranking. Which scale of measurement allows for ranking of data? Ranking of data, that is ordinal. We already seen ordinal. Ordinal scales are ordered data but do not specify equal intervals between categories. In which measurement scale does zero represent a true absence of the measured attribute? That is, uh, uh, you know, this ratio. Ratio scales have a true zero point, meaning zero indicates the absence of the measured quantity. Okay, so ratio scales have a true zero point, meaning zero indicates the absence of the measured quantity. Right, next one. Uh, which scale of measurement allows for arithmetic operations like addition and subtraction? interval, nominal, ordinal, ratio. That is a ratio. Which scale of measurement allows for arithmetic operation like addition? I mean, mathematical problems could be, we, we could solve through mathematical problems like, uh, mathematical tactics like ratio. Ratio scales allow for meaningful arithmetic operation due to the presence of a true zero point. Here the absence, in the above we saw, uh, you know, absence of the measure, uh, true yeah, ratio scales have a true zero point meaning zero indicates the absence of the measured quantity. That's okay. You know, here ratio scales allow for meaningful arithmetic operation due to the presence of a true zero point. Then descriptive data analysis. What measure of central tendency is least affected by outlays? Outlays means extreme in the normal curves, no? That is uh, mean, median, more range. That is median. Median is at the middle, no? So it won't be affected by the extreme values. The median is less sensitive to extreme values compared to the mean. What measure of variability depends on all values in the data set? Range, standard deviation, variance, interquartile range. That is variance. You know, variance considers all data points to calculate variability. That's very important. What is the purpose of fiduciary limits in descriptive statistics? 1% of significance, no? 5% uh, of significance value, all these things, no? The fiduciary limits in descriptive statistics. That is to set boundaries for confidence intervals. That is the purpose. You know, to set boundaries for confidence intervals. Fiduciary limits are used to determine the range within which a specified fraction of the distribution lies typically related to confidence intervals. Which uh, graphical presentation is best suited for displaying the distribution of a quantitative variable, bar chart, histogram, pie chart, line chart, that is histogram. Histogram shows the frequency distribution of continuous data. So the histogram is the uh, graphical presentation that is best suited for displaying the distribution of a quantitative variable. Then uh, what is a type 1 error in hypothesis testing? That is rejecting a true null hypothesis. Type 1 error occurs, type 1 error occurs when the null hypothesis is rejected when it is actually true. We have to keep this in mind. What is the consequence of decreasing the level of significance in hypothesis testing? to increase the type 1 error rate or a type 2 error rate or like that. So what is the purpose? Lowering the signification level reduces the chance of rejecting a true null hypothesis, type 1 error. 
so the decrease in type 1 error rate for that purpose we are decreasing the level of significance at 1% level like that type 1 error lowering the significance level reduces the chance of rejecting a true null hypothesis how is power related to a statistical test how is power related to a statistical test power increases with the effect size and sample size that is the idea here power is the probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis and increases with the larger effect sizes and sample sizes that is power power increases with the effect size and sample size keep this in mind what is effect size measured in statistical analysis that is magnitude of the relationship between variables magnitude effect size quantifies the strength of the relationship between variables beyond statistical significance effect size quantifies the strength of the relationship between variables beyond statistical significance then parametric techniques what conditions must be satisfied to use parametric statistical techniques what are the conditions for parametric statistical techniques data should be normally distributed that's very important parametric test assumes data follows a normal distribution very important question yeah, of course and parametric test normally follow the normal distribution which parametric techniques is used to, to compare means of two independent groups what is that a t test is appropriate for comparing means between two groups yeah, that is the question which parametric techniques is used to, to compare means of two independent groups that is a t test is appropriate for comparing means between two groups non parametric techniques when are non parametric techniques preferred over parametric ones small sample size non parametric tests are less sensitive to assumptions about the population distribution and are preferred for small sample sizes that is the purpose which non parametric test is used to for compare used to for comparing median scores between two independent groups uh, you know the different uh, uh, types of tests are given which is the right one which non parametric test is used for comparing median scores between two independent groups that is man whitney u test man whitney u test compares median scores between two independent groups what does inference statistics aim to do what does inference statistics aim to do that is it makes a predictions about a population based on sample data that is that is the purpose of this inferential uh, inferential statistics inferential st statistics use sample data to make generalizations about a population what is the correlation coefficient indicate that is strength and direction of the relationship between variables strength and direction of the relationship between variables that is important correlation coefficient measure the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two variables it can be plus or minus no use and interpretation of statistical techniques use and interpretation of statistical techniques when is a z test appropriate when is a z test appropriate when population uh, standard deviation is known when population standard deviation is known that is applied that is a, a z test is applied so a z test requires a knowledge of the population standard deviation so z test means it is related to the standard deviation you must understand what is anova test for what is the what is the purpose of anova test anova test anova test whether there are any statistically significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups anova test whether there are any statistically significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups in which situ situation is a chi square test appropriate uh, testing for association between categorical variables association testing for association between categorical variables chi square tests are used to, to determine if there is an association between two categorical variables now what is the purpose of data reduction in qualitative analysis what is the purpose of data reduction we already seen that in the theory data reduction aims to contents a large amounts of qualitative data into a manageable form or into manageable units which qualitative analysis technique involves comparing incidents or events to identify patterns that is constant comparison constant comparison involves comparing incidents or events to identify recurring themes or patterns how does a triangulation enhance qualitative research 
because two or three different methods are blended no, into uh, one method that is a triangulation. No? In research we are combining two or three methods. By combining different methods or data resources to strengthen validity. What is the purpose? To strengthen validity of the research. Triangulation involves using multiple methods or data resources to confirm findings and improve the validity of qualitative research. That is very important. Triangulation for validity of qualitative research. Uh, what is analytical induction aimed to achieve in qualitative research? Analytical in to generate theory from data. There is analytical means uh, analyzing the truths, no? Analytical induction. So all you know abstract uh, theoretical to generate theory from data. Analytical induction aims to generate or refine theory from qualitative data through systematic comparison and analysis. Now we have finished. Uh, Part C. Now we are entering into Part D. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what are the content here? What are the uh, subtopics in Part D? Qualitative research design, grounded theory design, types, characters, designs, steps in conducting grounded theory research, strength and weakness of grounded theory, then narrative research design, meaning and key characteristics, steps in conducting uh, you know narrative research design. Case, then case study, case study meaning characteristics, components of a case study design, types of case study design, steps of conducting case study research, strengths and weaknesses. Then for ethnography, meaning characteristics, underlying assumptions, steps of conducting ethnography research, writing ethnographic account, strengths and weaknesses, mixed method designs, characteristic types of mixed method designs, triangulation, explanatory, exploratory designs, steps in conducting MM designs, strength and weakness of uh, mixed method research then qualitative research designs grounded theory des design types characteristics design steps in conducting it i think i am repeating it sorry that i am repeating it now let us enter into the topic as such grounded theory designs what does this mean grounded theory aims to develop theories that are grounded in data systematically gathered and analyzed so data is the uh, first and foremost idea here grounded theory aims to develop theories out of data it has systematically gathered it emphasizes the emergence from the data rather than testing pre-existing hypothesis so it emphasizes the emergence from the data the, the research is emerging from the data rather than the hypothesis that is very important what are the types of gt design classic uh, grounded theory constructivist grounded theory other variations steps in conducting gt research i mean uh, grounded theory research data collection using methods like interviews observations or documents then coding open coding axial coding selective all come under uh, this uh, grounded theory research you know these words you know open coding that is nothing but uh, you know putting the uh, raw uh, ideas into some important uh, words coding so that the research becomes more rich that's a richer that is the idea here open coding axial coding selective coding then memoing writing analytical notes theoretical sampling theoretical sampling sampling based on emerging uh, based on emerging theoretical insights then theory development constructing hypothesis and integrating them into a coherent logical theory so actually it is uh, theory development this uh, gt you know grounded theory what are the stunts uh, stunts of this uh, theory it generates a rich detailed theories directly from the data it is flexible and adapted to various research contexts what are the weaknesses time consuming it requires a deep immersion in data and rigorous analysis skills not everyone can do uh, experts you know we need the narrative research design another type narrative research design so it comes under qualitative researches it focuses on the stories people tell about their exper experiences to understand human meaning making focuses on the stories people narrative means story you know storytelling like so what are the steps in conducting narrative research design identifying narratives collecting personal stories analyzing narratives looking for themes plot structures and the meanings then interpreting narratives making sense of the stories in relation to the research question we have a research question and making a sense out of these stories 
that is interpreting narratives. What are the strengths of uh, uh, narrating research? You know, it captures a personal experience and perspectives, provides insights into complex human phenomena. What are the weaknesses? It is interpretive nature. Interpretive nature can be subjective. You can see, you know, more, you know, uh, the researcher himself has to do everything, you know. So that way it is subjective. It is challenging to generalize findings. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this theory. Then case study. What is for case study? Uh, you know, what is for case study, not case, I'm sorry. What is for case study? Case study, in-depth investigation of a particular individual group or phenomenon within its real life context. In-depth investigation of a particular individual group or phenomenon within its real life context. What are the components of a CS design? Research questions, case selection criteria, data collection methods, and data analysis techniques. These are all components of a uh, case study design. Then, uh, types of CS design, intrinsic, instrumental, collective, and holistic. There are different types of case study, intrinsic, instrumental, collective, and holistic. Steps of conducting a CS research, that is case study research. Planning the study, defining objectives, and selecting cases. Then data collection, use multiple sources such as interviews, documents, and observations. Then data analysis, analyzing data to identify themes and patterns. Finally, reporting presenting findings, uh, present findings in a detailed, contextualized manner. What are the strengths of this CS design, that is case study design? Detailed exploration of complex issues, very difficult issues. It provides a contextual understanding. What are the weaknesses? A limited generalizability. You know, in a particular culture you are doing that and because of in a particular college, in a particular institution, in a particular uh, area, no? that means you cannot generalize for other areas or other colleges for an example. So limited generalizability, time and resource intensive, okay. Resource in the time factor and uh, resource intensive, intensive resource. Then the ethnography, what do, you, what do you mean by ethnography? It is a study of people and cultures through participant observation and in-depth interview. What is ethnography? It is a study of people and culture. It's a cultural study. Study of people and cultures through participant observation and in-depth interview. What are the underlying assumptions? It emphasizes cultural context, holistic understanding and participant perspectives. What are the steps of conducting ethnographic research? Immersion, going deeper and deeper into the lives of the people and finding out life. You know? That is the example. Immersion, spending extended time in the field. Uh, in the field. I mean, simply go and live with them and then do the research. That's that type of thing, immersion. Then participant observation, engaging directly with participants. Interview, gathering personal accounts and uh, uh, perspectives. Field notes documenting observations and reflections then writing ethnographic account describing findings in a narrative format in the you know easy easy to understand format narrative format what are the stents of this uh, you know uh, what is this called uh, ethnographic research what are the strengths it provides a rich nuanced insights into cultural phenomena it captures social context actually what are the weaknesses? Subjective interpretation. It requires a significant time and rapport building. Now finally, mixed method designs. It combines qualitative and quantitative approaches within a single study. What are the types of mixed method designs? Triangulation. In triangulation, we have three important aspects, namely convergence, complementarity, and expansion. So three, in th three ways you can do the triangulation research. Convergence, complementarity, and expansion. Then explanatory designs, exploratory designs, all come under MM designs. Explanatory designs, exploratory designs. Okay, steps in conducting MM designs. Planning, determine research questions and rational for using mixed methods. Why do we do that? You know, the rational. Uh, research questions should be there. Planning. Then data collection. Collect qualitative and quantitative data concurrently or sequentially. Then integration, merge or connect qualitative and quantitative data during analysis. Then interpretation, interpret findings uh, from both uh, areas, I mean both uh, types to draw comprehensive conclusions. 
So what are the stunts? It provides a broader understanding of research problems. It enhances validity through multiple pursuits. That's very important. Validity comes here. You know, what is the most important uh, use of this, uh, uh, you know, this what is called this MM research, uh, mixed uh, method research, that is to enhances validity of the research. More validity you are able to get. So that's very important. What are the weaknesses? Complex to implement, very difficult to implement. It requires expertise in both qualitative and quantitative methods. Expertise, I mean, only experts can do like. So we know all this. Then some of the questions. What is grounded theory and how does it differ from other qualitative research approaches? What is grounded? How, how is it different? It is a method for developing theories based on data. That is grounded theory. Simply from data, you are making the entire research. So it is a, it is a theoretical in its approach. Grounded theory is about uh, deriving theories or explanations from the data itself rather than testing pre-existing theories. What are the main types of grounded theory designs? That is uh, classic GT, emergent GT, applied GT, grounded theory. These types reflect variations in how theory is developed and applied in grounded theory. What are the key characteristics of grounded theory? That is inductive reasoning, constant comparison, theoretical summary, three things here. You know, three characteristics of uh, this uh, GT, you know, the grounded theory research, inductive reasoning, constant comparison, and theoretical sampling. Outline the steps involved in conducting a grounded theory research. Steps involved in grounded theory research. What are the data collection, coding, that's what I said now, from the raw data you have to put it into, you know, specific uh, uh, themes, that is coding. Then memo writing, based on the coding you write the uh, memo writing, very essential aspect. You know, it, it covers everything at the same time, it gives in a very, very, uh, you know, uh, simplified and summarizing manner, memo writing, then theoretical sampling. Uh, you know, uh, you give evidence through certain samplings, you know, theoretical sampling. I mean, uh, from what you have gathered from your notes, uh, you have certain sampling, certain models are here and there. And from that you have you know, what you call theoretical sampling, then saturation. You, you know, give the entire uh, thesis like saturation. So data collection, coding, memo writing, theoretical sampling and saturation. These steps outline the uh, important process of developing ground, grounded theory. What are the strengths of grounded theory? What are the strengths? Uh, gen it generates a rich, detailed theories suitable for exploratory research. Grounded theory is valued for its ability to generate comprehensive theories grounded in data. That is very, very important. Grounded in data. What are the weaknesses of grounded theory? That is uh, subjective interpretation and time consuming process. Subjective interpretation. Finally, the researcher has to do the interpretation. It may be false also. It may fall short of the expectations of others possible. So grounded theory can be criticized for its subjective elements and the extensive time commitment involved. The next one, narrative research design. So what is the question you can ask? What is narrative research and its key characteristics? What is narrative and key characteristics? Okay, uh, so the, this is the one. It focuses on individual stories. It emphasizes meaning making. Very important, meaning making. That is narrative research makes meanings. You know, out of the stories given by the individuals. So it focuses on individual stories. Emphasizes meaning making. Narrative research explores individual experiences and the construction of personal narratives. What are the steps involved in conducting a narrative research design? That is, uh, a participant selection. Of course, you cannot get stories from any and everyone. No? And those who are able to tell stories, you can go, isn't it? So participant selection, story collection, thematic analysis narrative construction so for four uh, uh, you know steps participant selection story collection thematic analysis narrative construction finally these steps outline the process of correct analyzing narratives in research next one is case study right next one is case study define case study and its key characteristics what question you can ask okay define case study and its key characteristics 
case studies delve deeply into specific cases to understand complex phenomena in depth the exploration of a single instance or phenomenon that is case study in depth going deeper and deeper into one aspect that is case study in depth the exploration of a single instance or phenomenon case studies delve deeply into specific cases to understand complex phenomena what are the components of a case study design what are the parts what are the components correct answer research question formulation first case selection data collection methods data analysis techniques are the four things research question formulation case selection data collection methods data analysis techniques then what are the types of case study designs types of case study designs that is a descriptive exploratory explanatory so three things you know uh, so there are three types here descriptive exploratory and explanatory they are the types of case study designs okay descriptive exploratory and explanatory right then outline the steps involved in conducting a case study research outline the steps involved in the case study method research question formulation case selection data collection data analysis report writing etc it has come already what are the strength strengths of case study research it provides a rich detailed insight suitable for complex phenomena it provides a rich detailed insight it is suitable for complex phenomena case studies are valued for the depth and the ability to explore complex issues in detail what are the weakness of case study research that is uh, case studies uh, you know limited generalizability that is one of the weaknesses you cannot generalize to everything no case study a particular aspect of a particular uh, phenomena for an example you are calling a particular college you are just going and then uh, you know making a study you know doing the study on that so we cannot generalize these findings for another college in delhi you know so that we limited generalizability potential for researcher bias there is a chance of uh, prejudice you know potential for researcher bias case studies are criticized for the limited ability to generalize findings beyond the specific case this is a specific case case study you cannot generalize you know beyond this one you know generalization only for this case uh, and also it has the potential for subjective interpretation subjective interpretations are possible case study right define ethnography and its underlying assumptions study of cultural phenomena it assumes a cultural relativism what does this mean ethnography involves studying cultures from within and assumes that cultures can only be understood in their own terms that is called cultural relativism you know a particular a, a man from a particular culture cannot understand a man from another culture it is possible unless you go and then live in that particular culture you cannot understand it sometimes uh, problems come because of that cultural relativism so ethnography involves studying cultures from within and assumes that cultures can only be understood in their own terms what are the characteristics of ethnographic research what are the characteristics of ethnographic research uh, that is a participant observation immersion in culture going deeper and deeper into the culture living out in that culture that holistic understanding uh, uh, holistic understand i mean what to motta mana or pave participant observation immersion in culture and holistic understanding that is ethno ethnographic research that are the characteristics of ethnographic research uh, ethnographic research relies on participant observation to gain an insider perspective on cultural practices inside means you go inside and then see insider perspective outline the steps involved in conducting ethnography research already we have seen that uh, participant selection immersion in culture field notes theme identification etc right how is an ethnographic account typically written how is it written so descriptive narrative of cultural practices and observation that is what you can do you have to describe no? in a narrative form various cultural practices and observations of that particular group which you studied that is the idea here descriptive narrative of cultural practices and observation that is ethnographic research ethnography accounts usually involve rich descriptions and narratives of cultural experiences experiences and practices what are the strengths of ethnographic research that is it provides a rich contextual understanding it captures cultural nuances ethnography is valued for its ability to provide deep insights into cultural phenomena and practices 
What are the weaknesses of ethnographic research? That is subject to interpretation, time consuming process. Ethnography can be criticized for its subjective elements and the extensive time commitment involved. What are the characteristics of mixed method design? What are the characteristics of mixed method design? That is, uh, it integrates a qualitative and quantitative approaches. It seeks to complement the strengths. Right. So, complements uh, the strength from this uh, uh, type and its strength from that side are mingling together. So, complement strengths. Mixed method design combine qualitative and quantitative methods to provide a comprehensive understanding of research questions. What are the types of mixed method designs? What are the types? Triangulation, explanatory, exploratory. These are the types of mixed method research. Triangulation, explanatory and exploratory. This type describes the different types of mixed methods can be applied to research. Outline the steps involved in conducting a mixed method design. That is, research question formulation, sequential data collection, integration of findings. So these are the steps. Research question formulation. First you have to find the question no, before entering into the research. Then uh, sequential, very logical data collection. What should uh, come as the first? That first should come that way. Sequential data collection and integration of findings. The explanation. These steps outline how qualitative and quantitative data are integrated in mixed method research. What are the strengths of mixed method research? What are the strengths? That is, it provides a comprehensive insight, validates findings across methods, provides comprehensive insight. Mixed method research combines the strengths of qualitative and quantitative approaches to provide a holistic understanding of research questions. What are the weaknesses of mixed method research? It is uh, a no, complex integration process. Uh, it requires the expertise in both methods. It is a complex integration process. Mixed method research can be challenging due to the complexity of integrating qualitative and integrative data in the, and it requires the expertise in both approaches. Uh, I hope I have finished everything. God bless you abundantly. Uh, let us meet in other uh, units. I think we, we so far we have finished six units for information. Please go through everything. I have given it in a nutshell actually. Not giving too many details or anything. From the exam point of view, this will be of great help. I strongly believe it. If you go through this everything, each and every word, you will not forget. And you know, in the exam paper, you will be able to see exactly the same thing here. Of course, you know, first time I am doing this type of thing, but I am sure it will be very useful for you. Of course, there are different uh, perceptions with regard to preparation remain. I follow a particular method. For me, the grassroots level, that's more important. Giving the answer, giving the explanation, give, introducing the themes is the one way of uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, it's the best way of doing, especially for exam. Now, when the exam comes in very immediately, uh, this is the nice method. Of course, uh, there are other methods. The whole year you can prepare, no? uh, you can have question papers, you can have this, you can uh, solve certain things. All these things are there. I don't, in fact, uh, you should do that actually. But then in order to prepare for the exam very quickly, uh, sometimes uh, this type of method will be of great help. Even the last minute, uh, uh, you know, people who are preparing, no? the last minute preparation. This, uh, this type of uh, preparation can be very helpful. So anyhow, if you are, if it is helpful, if you are able to crack net because of such points, I will be really grateful to you. I want to listen to you. I want to hear good word from you later on if you are following me uh, often. Thank you very much dear friends. Kindly subscribe. God bless you abundantly.